All right, so get this. We are diving deep into the newest D&D player's handbook. Hot off the presses, right? Yeah, for the 2024 edition. Yeah. We're talking like 50 years. 50 years. Of uh, all that D&D goodness, like it's just... dragon slaying and dungeon delving. Yeah. And it's all packed into this book. All of it. We've got excerpts for you from the rule book itself. Mm -hmm. We're talking about everything down to the cover art. And you know what's really impressive? It's how they've managed to take this huge legacy yeah, and like really celebrate it, but yeah. also make it very clear for new players to come in. Totally. Dreamlined rules and the glossary lifesaver. Oh, tell me more about that glossary because like oh, it's great. flipping back and forth for hours the worst. in those old editions. Oh, I'm getting PTSD. Right. But okay, so we're going through all this. Yeah. What's the mission? What do we want people to take away from this deep dive? I think, you know, we want you ready to play. Yeah. Like yeah. ready to roll those dice. So this is your crash course in D&D. &D, yes. Understanding the core mechanics. Yes. Getting a handle on what's new in this edition. Okay. And just like sparking that imagination. Exactly. And one of the things I love is right out of the gate, they emphasize how little you actually need to play. That's right. This book, Player's Handbook, yeah. Dungeon Master's Guide, Monster Manual. You got it. And of course, your dice. Of course. <laughs> Can't forget those. Just gotta have those dice. And they even give a nod to D&D &D Beyond, right? right? If you're like all about that digital life. All digital, all the time. Yeah. Which, you know, that's fair. A lot of people are these days. A lot of people are. And they really don't waste any time uh, throwing you right into the D&D &D multiverse. No, they don't. They're like, here's all these worlds. Here's a deal. Filled with magic and monsters. Magic and monsters. You get glimpses of those iconic settings, right? <laughs> like Forgotten Realms. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's awesome. Which, I mean, as a new player, talk about yeah. like sparking the imagination. Like, right. whoa, I want to explore that. And speaking of sparking that imagination, okay, we have to talk about... Let's do it. Building your legend, building your character. Yes. Chapter two, they go through it step by step. Love it. And they start with choosing your class. Okay. Right. You get your classic fighter, wizard, rogue, all that good stuff. The classics. But here's where things get interesting, because they add this thing called Session Zero. Session Zero. I love it. Now, for people who might not know, what is Session Zero? So, Session Zero is this idea of, like, getting on the same page okay. with your friends and the Dungeon Master. So, it's like, before you even start playing. Before you even start, you're all sitting down, you're going, what kind of game do we want to play? So you're setting expectations. You're setting expectations. Yeah, it's so smart. What are the boundaries? No, oh, that's such a good idea. What kind of story do we want to tell? Yeah. It's really about collaborative storytelling. I love that. And making sure that everyone at the table is having fun. That's awesome. I wish I had thought of that for some of my first campaigns. I know. Because sometimes, you know, people have different... Totally different. expectations going in. And, and then... It can, be, it can lead to conflict, right? Exactly. So that's such a good idea. Okay, so sure. you've had your session zero. Yep. You've got your class. Got my class. Now it's time to figure out, like, where did you come from? Your origin. Right. Origin, origin, origin. But here's the thing. What's that? Origin in this edition, it's not just about your species anymore. It's not. It's about your species and D, your background, which is a huge change. It's a huge change. From older editions. It's amazing because it just adds so much depth. Right. It really does. Yeah. Because, like, think about it. A soldier elf is going to be very different from a hermit elf. Oh, uh, 100%. So your background really shapes who your character is, their motivations, their beliefs, maybe even how they interact with other people. That makes so much sense. Yeah. Okay, so we've got, like, you know, we're starting to get a character here. But yeah, we're getting there. Now we got to talk about the ability score. All right, let's talk about it. This is, like... This is the meat. This is like the heart of your character. The heart of your character's capability. Absolutely. We're talking strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom. Don't forget charisma. And of course, charisma, the ever important charisma. The most important one. Mm, just kidding. <laughs> right? Yeah. Maybe. Uh, but this edition, they really hammer home this point by system. They do. For how you decide those scores. Can you explain point by a little bit? Yeah. So point by is interesting because each score has a cost. Yeah. And you have a limited number of points to spend. So do you want your character to be super strong 
but maybe not so smart? Right, right. Or do you want them to be kind of good at everything? It's all about trade-offs. Well, it's like choosing your strengths and weaknesses right from the get-go. Right from the get-go. And they give you this thing called a standard array, which mm -hmm. is kind of like the average. Right. But you could even dive back into older editions if you want, if your Dungeon Master is feeling a little nostalgic. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So you can pull from, like, older editions if you want. You can. You can. That's cool. Yeah. But what I love about regardless of how you get your ability scores yes. is they're more than just numbers right they give you like these vivid descriptions now for like if you have a high strength you know or a low strength exactly so it's like you're not just saying like oh my character has a 15 strength you're like oh my character is you know I I imposing muscular yeah easily winded if they have a low strength right exactly it really helps you visualize like who this character is yeah. beyond just those numbers. Yes. Which is so important, I think. You're not just saying, oh, my character has a 15 strength. You're like, oh, my character could probably like bench press a troll. Exactly. Like that's what we're talking about. That's the energy we bring to the table. And then of course we have the final languages. Oh yes. Like Everyone starts up. knowing common, the basic language. Right. But then you get to pick two more from this list and they're based on your species and your background. And I am looking at this list right now and it is incredible. It's so cool. You've got your elvish, your dwarvish. Yeah, you got your standards. But then you have things like abyssal. Oh, abyssal. Spoken by demons. Right. What? That's so cool. So cool. Or sylvan, you know, like the language of the fae. Ooh. And those like rarer languages, I feel like Whoa. they add such a layer of intrigue. They do. Like, imagine you're the only one in your party who right. can understand, like, a whispered prophecy Ooh. from, like, a talking tree or something like that. Yeah. That's so cool. That is cool. Okay, but before we get too far into, like, ancient prophecies and stuff, yeah. we have to get into, like, the mechanics. We gotta talk about the mechanics. Of how this game actually plays. Okay, let's do it. So, we'll start with the core. The core of it all. The D20 test. The D20. It all comes down to this. It does. So explain this a little bit. All right. So whether you are trying to pick a lock or trying to resist a magical spell or even swinging a sword at a nasty goblin. It's all a D20. It's all that D20 roll. Wow. That, along with your modifiers, will determine your fate. And one of the biggest modifiers you add to that roll. Tell me more. Is your proficiency bonus. Yes. Proficiency bonus. Okay, so proficiency bonus, can you break that down? Yeah, so proficiency bonus is essentially your character's expertise. Okay. In certain areas, certain things. Okay. And it gets bigger as you level up. Oh, I like that. Okay, so the more you level up. You get better. The better you get. Yeah, at the things your character's good at. So it's like if you're playing a rogue. Yeah. And they're amazing at picking pockets, for example. They should be. Um, Their dexterity is already high. Yeah. But as they level up, that proficiency bonus gets even bigger. Even bigger, that's right. And they are just... Untouchable. Untouchable. And speaking of rogues... Okay. They actually get this thing called expertise. What? Which allows them to double their proficiency bonus for certain skills. No way! So they're not just good, they're like legendary. Legendary pickpockets, exactly. No, no. That's amazing. That's the dream. I love that. Okay, so we've got this whole D20 system. Yeah. What else do we need to know? Well, we got to talk about advantage and disadvantage. Okay, advantage and disadvantage, yeah. Okay. What are those? Because that can really mix things up. Yeah, yeah. So imagine you are in a standoff. Okay. With a nasty goblin. Okay. And you are hidden behind some battlements. Okay. You have this upper hand. Gotcha. That might be where a dungeon master says you have advantage on your next attack. Ooh, okay, I like it. Meaning... You get to roll two d20s instead of one, uh -huh. and you get to take the higher number. Oh, that's amazing. Okay. Yeah. So what's the opposite of that? Disadvantage. The opposite is disadvantage. Okay. So let's say, you know, you're in that same scenario, but this time yeah. some dust gets kicked up in your face, and now you're blinded. Oh, no. You might have disadvantage on your next attack, oh. meaning you roll two d20s. But you got to take the lower one. So even though you're rolling the same dice, it's those yep. situational... Like um, things that can really affect it. That can really swing things. Absolutely. In your favor or against it. It adds a layer of strategy, a layer of unpredictability. Ooh, I love it. Keeps you on your toes. Okay, so we've got our characters. Okay. We're understanding how to make basic checks. We're getting there. Things are getting interesting, but what about when things get really interesting? Ooh, what does that mean? We're talking combat. Let's talk combat. How does that all work? All right, so picture this. You walk into a tavern, and all of a sudden, 
the doors bust open. Oh. Uh, and a group of bandits enter. I've seen this movie. It's yeah. not looking good. How do we decide who goes first? Ooh, good question. How do we decide who goes first? I'm guessing that's where initiative comes in. That's where initiative comes in. Everyone's going to roll a dexterity check. Okay. Add any modifiers they might have. And then whoever rolls the highest gets to go first. Gets to act first. And then it goes down the line. Down the line. I love that. Keeps it organized. It's like a it's like a high stakes game of like who goes first. Exactly. Who goes first <laughs> and adds to the suspense. Yes, yeah. totally. It's but like it's edge of your seat. Total. Who's going to go first? Okay, so initiative is set. Okay. This bandit yep. with the like... The nastiest grin, they rolled a natural 20. Oh, boy. They're up first. Oh. What can they do? So, on your turn, you get to move. Okay. And take an action. Okay, so movement's pretty simple. Movement's pretty simple. You can move up to your speed. Okay. Actions. That's where it gets fun. Okay, so let's break down action. So let's say yeah. our bandit here yeah. wants to attack. Good. How does that play out? So, they would make an attack roll, which is another d20 test. Okay. They're going to roll that die. They're going to add any modifiers they have to their role. Okay. So that could be based on like their strength, if they're using a weapon, maybe their proficiency with that weapon. Okay. And if that total equals or exceeds your armor class, they hit. Okay, so armor class, yeah. that's basically how tough your character is to hit. How tough you are to hit. Okay, that's it. gotcha, gotcha. Exactly. And this is where things get fun because remember, Advantage and disadvantage. Oh, right. Yeah. They come into play in combat, too. Oh, yeah. So maybe that bandit is flanking with an ally. Okay. They're surrounding you. They might have advantage on their attack. Okay. I like it. See? Adds a level of strategy to it. Yeah. You got to think about these things. Where are you on the battlefield? Okay. So yeah. what if they roll that beautiful, beautiful 20? Ooh, a natural 20. A natural 20. What happened? That's a critical hit. Oh, no. Not only do they hit you automatically. Oh, no. But they get to roll more damage dice. So it's like a, it's a good hit. You're going to feel that one. You're going to feel it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oof. Not looking good for, for my character right now. But on the flip side. Yeah, yeah. What if they had rolled a one? Ooh, a natural one. A natural one. That's a critical miss. Oh. Okay. It's a fumble, a disaster for the bandit. Okay, so it's not just a miss. It's not just a miss. Yeah. It's like they trip. They trip. They stumble. Something bad happens. Something bad happens. The weapon falls apart. Who knows? I love it. It's up to the DM. But usually that means they just miss entirely. I'm feeling a little bit better about my character's chances now. There you go. There you go. Okay, so we've talked about attacking. Okay. But combat isn't always about, like going for the kill right <laughs> that's true like what about if you just want to like knock someone out right like subdue them subdue them yeah so this edition actually has rules for that oh does it really yeah that's cool so instead of dealing a potentially deadly blow okay your character can choose to knock a creature unconscious so it's like a choice you make <laughs> it's a choice you make oh i like that it's good for players who you know, aren't necessarily into the... Uh, blood and gore. Yeah, the blood and gore. They don't want to paint the tavern floor red. Right, exactly. Yeah, you're just there to... You're just there to subdue. Subdue, keep the peace. Keep the peace, I like it. Okay. Hear it. So we're talking about, like, all these choices you can make in combat. Yeah, there's a lot of choices. And, like, you know, the different outcomes. Uh -huh. But there's this one thing. It always makes me nervous when I'm playing D&D. &D. What's that? Opportunity attacks. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like, I never know. Am I going to provoke? Right. Am I not going to provoke? Yeah. So an opportunity attack happens when okay. a creature leaves your reach. Oh, okay. So that bandit tries to, like, run past you to get to your wizard in the back. <laughs> yeah, they're going for the weak link. That's when you get to take a swing at them as they flee. Oh, I see. So you don't just get to no, no, run willy-nilly. You don't get to disengage that easily. Okay. There are consequences. Okay. Yeah. But I'm guessing there are ways to, like, not provoke? Oh, of course. Okay. Yeah, so there's actually an action called disengage, okay. which allows you to move out of an enemy's reach without provoking that opportunity attack. Okay. So, again, it's about strategy. Oh, I like it. Okay, so we've talked about attacking. Right. But eventually, your character's going to take a hit. That's the truth. It's going to happen. How does, like, damage and healing, all that work? Okay, so every character has hit points. 
Okay. Which represent how much damage they can take before they go down. So the more hit points you have... The tougher you are. The tougher you are. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And it's not just about how many hit points you have. It's also about thinking about damage types. Oh. Okay. You got slashing, piercing, fire. Right. All sorts of things. Oh, like the different elements. Exactly. Okay. And some creatures might be resistant or even immune to certain damage types. So like if I'm going up against like... A fire elemental. Yeah. Using fire is probably not a good idea. Probably not going to work out too well for you. Okay. So you got to think about like. You got to be strategic. Okay. 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 I like it. Got to. Um, okay. So we're in combat. Things are happening. Things are happening. Dice are rolling. Dice are rolling. People are yelling. Swords are clashing. But yeah. we haven't even talked about spells yet. Oh, the spells. Spell casting yeah, is such a huge part of D&D. &D. It's true. It's true. Yeah. So what are some of the things you can do with spells? Yeah, what can you do? Spells can do a lot. You can use them to attack. Okay. You can use them to heal. Okay. You can buff your allies. No. You can debuff your enemies. Oh, that's fun. You can control the elements. You can even talk to animals if you want. Stop it. It's true. Really? Really. That's amazing. There's so much. So much. I'm looking at the spells section right now. Yeah. And, I mean, there's everything from, like, Firebolt. Classic Firebolt. Magic Missile. Another classic. Which, you know, you gotta love a good Magic Missile. You do, you do. Uh, to, like, cure wounds. Ah, uh, gotta have that healing. So important. Speak with animals. I know. I told you. I know, you were right. Who doesn't want to talk to squirrels all day long? Right. That's the dream. That's the dream. Okay, so Wrong. how do spells actually, like, yeah. like work? Like, yeah, I said cure wounds, but, like, what does that actually mean? Yeah, so each spell have, yeah. like, a description, okay. a casting time, a range, a duration. Oh, wow. There's a lot that goes into it. So, for example, cure wounds okay. is a healing spell, obviously. Right. That takes an action to cast. Okay. It has a range of touch. Okay. And it happens instantly. So if I'm like, yeah. oh, my gosh, my friend is getting pummeled by this bandit. Yep. I have to, like, run over to them and, like touch them you got to use your action and use my action to cast that spell okay and then boom they get healed up a certain way. okay okay yeah yeah gotcha gotcha now what about spell slots oh spell slots so spell slots because i see that in the book yeah and it seems important but yeah so spell slots are important because they determine okay how many spells of each level you can cast per day okay so the more powerful the spell the more powerful the spell the like the higher spell slot you need to use. The higher the level of spell slot, that's what Oh, I'm... okay. Yeah. So it's something you really got to, like... Yeah, it's like a research. Oh, you got to manage your spell slots carefully. You don't want to use them all up on that first encounter. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah. You've cast your spells. You've done some damage. Yeah. Hopefully you've taken some damage. Probably. You know, it's a whole thing. That's D&D. &D. It's D&D. &D. Now what? Like, you need a break. You need a rest. Okay. How does resting work? So there's two types of rests in this edition. Okay, two. Short rest and long rest. Short rest, long rest. Okay. So short rest, we talking like bathroom break? Short rest is like, think an hour. Okay. So you're still like in the thick of things. You're still in it? Yeah. You're catching your breath. Okay, okay. Maybe having a quick snack. I like it. Long rest, we're talking a full eight hours. Okay, so that's... Like... A good night's sleep. You're done, you're done with adventuring for the day. You're probably safe. Hopefully you're safe. Hopefully. You should be. You never know. That's true. It is D&D. &D. Okay, so short rest. You regain, like, some hit points. You get some hit points back, yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe a few other resources, depending on your class. Okay, okay, yeah. But for a full recharge, you're talking long rest. Long rest, yeah. Okay, I like it. Gotta sleep to live another day. To adventure another day, that's uh, right. Exactly. Okay, so we've talked about combat, like, pretty in-depth now. We have. I'm feeling good about it. That's good. I'm glad. Like, I feel like I know what's happening. Yeah. But combat yeah. isn't the only thing you do. That's true. In D&D. &D. There's more to it. You've also got... You've got the exploration. Ex social interaction. Which can be just as... It's, oh, absolutely. Feeling. A hundred percent. Can be just as rewarding. Okay, so let's talk about that a little bit. Let's do it. So exploration first, because, mm. like, you're going into these dungeons. Yeah, you got your dungeons, you got your forests. Creepy forests, bustling city markets. Yeah, you never know what you're going to get. Right. It's true. How do you handle all of these? Well, I think this edition really emphasizes the use of your senses. Okay. Like, your sight, your hearing smell, touch, 
even taste. So it's not just about what you can see. It's not just about what you see. It's like what you can hear, smell. Exactly. Is what you might even feel beneath your feet. Oh, yeah. Ooh, getting creepy. A little creepy. To create these, like, really immersive experiences. Okay. And the environment plays a big role in that, right? It does. Like, the book even talks yeah. about different categories of That's illumination. Kind of, you got, like... Bright light. Bright light, yeah. Dim light. Dim light. Then darkness. So break that down for me. Okay, so bright light, you can see everything perfectly. It's like, you know, the sun is shining, we're good. We're good. Okay. Dim light, things are getting a little murky. Okay. You might not be able to see as far. Right, right. And then darkness is just... Darkness, you're essentially blind. You can't see. Unless... Unless... You have a way to see in the dark. Okay. Like dark vision. Right, right. Which some races have like elves they're always I, yeah. sneaking around in the dark they're known for it yeah so they can see in dim light as if it were bright light <laughs> and in darkness as if it were dim light oh so they've got like built-in night vision goggles pretty much that's so cool i love it i know right and then some creatures even have more specialized senses okay like what like tremor sense tremor sense what's that which allows them to sense vibrations in the ground Whoa. So they can tell if something's coming up on them, even if they can't see it. Oh, that's so creepy, but like in a cool way. In a cool way. In a cool oh, way. Okay. Or blindsight, where they don't need their eyes at all. Whoa. They can just sense things around them. So they're just like aware. They're aware. Oh, that's that's a little creepy. A little that? creepy. A little creepy, but very, very cool for D&D. &D. Right. Like I can see how incorporating all of these senses yeah. really makes like exploration this is a exciting. But scary. Yeah, exactly. Like suspenseful. Yeah, like imagine yeah. you're in a dungeon. Oh, okay, yeah. And it's dark. Uh huh. You can't see. And you're really relying on like what you're hearing. What you're hearing, yeah. To figure out where to go. Yeah. Are there traps? Are there creatures lurking about? Oh, yeah. And then you hear like a low growl just ahead. Oh, dumb. And you're like, uh, DM, I don't know about this. I want to go back. Right, exactly. Oh, I love it. So good. So good. Exploration can be very rewarding. I bet. Okay, so yeah. we've explored some spooky dungeons. Okay. We've faced down some bandits. We've been through a lot. But now it's time to put yeah. away the sword okay. and like engage in now, some good old fashioned social interaction. Let's talk to some people. How does that all work? All right, so this is where your character's personality and social skills really come into play. So we're talking about those ability scores again. Back to those ability scores. Charisma. Charisma. Oh, yeah. This is where it shines. Right. Because, like, who needs high charisma when you're fighting a dragon? Well, maybe a little bit. Maybe a little. Maybe to, like, calm it down. I don't know. To talk your way out of it. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, you're right. Social situations, charisma is going to be your best friend. Okay, so give me an example. Like, right. I want, I don't know. You walk into a tavern. I walk into a tavern. You want to get some information out of the tavern? Sure. Eat, yeah, yeah. Who's looking real grumpy today? Oh, well, he's not giving it up easily. He's not giving it up. What do you do? Okay, so I probably need to make, like, a charisma check. You probably make a charisma check. You're going to roll that d20. Yeah. Add your charisma modifier. Okay. And maybe your proficiency bonus, if you're proficient in, like, persuasion, okay. deception, things like yep. that. Okay. And, you know... Depending on how well you roll yeah. and what the dungeon master decides, yeah. that tavern keep might be more or less willing to, you know, spill the beans. Okay. Okay. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not all about like what you roll though, right? right. Because that's like kind of boring. <laughs> it's really. It can be. It can be. Yeah. This is where role playing comes in. Okay. So you really want to like, you know, put on a show for your dungeon master. Oh, a hundred percent. Really sell it. So how is your character acting? What's the tone of their voice? What's their body language like? And the dungeon master might even give you bonuses to your role. If you are particularly charming or, you know, if you come up with some really creative way to, you know. Persuade them. To persuade them. Oh, I like it. It's all part of the fun. Okay, so it's it's like a combination of. It's a combo. Dice rolls. Dice rolls. Yeah. Your character skills. Yep. And like your own, like. You know your own creativity acting chops yeah. exactly exactly okay okay and don't forget about insight checks oh right yeah insight insight checks those can be really important in social situations too yeah because insight is all about like 
It's about reading people. Reading people. Figuring out if they're telling the truth. Are they lying to my face right now? Exactly. Yeah, okay. So that can be really important, like, during a tense negotiation. Or, you know, if you think somebody might be suspicious. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's not just about, like, passing the check. It's mm. about, like, yeah. what do you glean from it? Exactly. Even a failed role can mm -hmm. be interesting. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't know for sure if they're lying, but you pick up on this, like, weird tick they Ooh. do or like their eye twitches a little bit it, you're like okay i don't know if you're lying to me but you're definitely hiding something you're hiding something exactly Ooh, i love that yeah yeah okay so we've gone through like a lot so much yeah. like character creation yeah core mechanics how combat works you think of it exploration mm -hmm. social interaction we've done it i feel like i could jump into a game right now you could you totally could. But before you do, we should probably touch on yeah. some of the key highlights okay. of this edition. Yeah. Because there are some big changes. Right. For the 2024 edition. Yeah. This is brand new. Yeah. Like, this is hot off the presses, really. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, what? Give me some examples. Okay. So, first off, character creation okay. is way more streamlined and easier, especially if you're a new player. Oh, I like that. It's very intuitive. Okay. And they've made some tweaks to the background system, which we talked about earlier, right. which is great. It just feels more integrated into your character's story. I do love how much emphasis they put on yeah. making the background more than just... More than a line. A line. It's it's really... Yep. Yeah, it's who you are. And it's meaty. It's meaty. It's important. It informs it does. like your motivations, your beliefs, even relationship. how you interact with other characters. And it's huge. And then there's the feats. Oh, the feats. Yeah. Now... For people who haven't played in a while, maybe yeah. explain what feats are. Okay, so feats are special abilities that you can choose to take okay. as your character levels up. So you get to, like, customize them. Customize. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, I like that. They can give you an edge in combat. They can make your skills even better. They can even grant you these, like, unique abilities that no other class can get. So it's like you're choosing your character's destiny. Exactly. Exactly. Do you want to be the master swordsman? Yeah. Do you want to be a charismatic leader? Mm -hmm. Do you want to be a stealthy infiltrator? Ooh. The choices. It's up to you. It's all about you. I love it. Yeah. Okay, so they've added feats. They've... They've streamlined character creation. They've really emphasized the importance of your background. Yeah. It's great. Okay. They've taken everything great about D&D, &D, the storytelling, the combat, the sense of adventure. Yeah. And... Just made it better. I'm here for it. Yeah, it's going to be great. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here. We have. I feel like yeah. our listeners are probably like brains are full. Full of D&D. &D. Full of D&D. &D. But what would you say is like the, like the one thing you want people to take away? I think the biggest takeaway is that D&D &D is a game about imagination. Okay. Collaboration. Yeah. And fun. Yeah. The rules are just a framework. The real magic happens when you get together with your friends, yeah. you roll some dice, yeah, and you let your imaginations run wild. Yeah, it's about the stories you create together, yes. uh, the bonds you make, the memories. Absolutely. That's what it's all about. 100%. Okay, so we're we're wrapping up here. Yeah. But I, as someone who clearly like loves d and I do, I do. What excites you about this edition? What's got you like... Oh, that's a great question. Itching to start playing. I think for me, it's the sense of like refinement I'm seeing throughout this whole book. Okay. It really feels like they've taken the time to listen. Yeah. To really take in all the feedback yeah. from players, from how the game's evolved, and like distill it down to this really elegant, engaging system. I like that. It's both familiar, yeah. you know, but also like kind of new and fresh. Yeah. Like rediscovering. Something you love. Yes, 100%. That's such a great way to put it. Yeah. Like they've polished it up. Yeah. Made it shine even brighter, you know? Yeah. And like that's what makes me so excited because it just feels like this launch pad. Okay. For so many new adventures, yeah. stories. New characters. New characters, new everything. It's going to be great. Oh, I'm so excited. I am too. Well, on that note. Yeah. That about wraps up our deep dive our deep dive into the D&D &D 2024 player's handbook yes we covered like the basics the basics yeah we explored the changes and i, I think hopefully sparked some imaginations out there yes 
get those creative juices flowing. Yeah. So until next time. Until next time. May your roles yes. be ever in your favor. May they be ever in your favor. And may your adventures be legendary. <laughs>